Good morning from Marblehead, Massachusetts. This is Mr. Clean from Sailing Anarchy on the final day of the Marblehead Nude um, Championship, whatever it is. We are racing in the Viper 640 fleet, with, and it's also their North Americans. Um, I've been uh, uh, I've been given a, a 640, a brand new one, to drive by the class president, uh, uh, who's over there, putting his boat in the water. Um, and we've had a great time here. Um, 24, 25 boats, I think, on the water. Um, and uh, plenty of breeze yesterday, lots of fun, lots of speed, lots of good parties. I, uh, I want to talk to... This morning, Brian Bennett and Paul Young, the original designer of the Viper and the redesigner and builder of the Viper. Um, and just sort of get a little feel for, uh, Brian, you were telling me all about why you first um, put this thing together. You're not a boat designer by trade. You, uh, right. You're just a dude. So what, what, dude. what possessed you to, you know, in 1990, what was it, four? 1995. 1995. Yeah. What possessed you to design this quick little thing? Well, in '95, I was, uh, you know, in, in the depths of a boat shop, you know, uh, performance type boat shop, speed shop, as we'd call it, and uh, uh, worked a lot on etchels and star boats and Rhodes 19s, sonars, J22s, 24s, that kind of thing. And the Viper was very much born out of a, you know, a, a new concept of, of sailing. The Malgus had been launched uh, for about a year and a half, and. And the Viper was very much a, a hybrid concept where we'd take a keel boat and a dinghy and blend the two together and use some 505 Flying Dutchman type of concepts and design a light, light planing keel boat with a lifting keel, of course. And, and the, the sprit boat concept had been well, uh, well uh, you know, established at that point with the Malgus. And we felt at that point there was, a, there was room in the market for a smaller boat. So, so it, you know, you. You definitely, you have to uh, look at the first shot around for the Viper and say, it didn't work. What happened? At the aluminum rig um, with the small keel, what, 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 why was it so hard to build momentum in the class? I think probably, you know, the, in the early days, you know, the Viper was, was a challenging boat to sail with a, a little less riding moment. And, you know, we, there's no question that, you know, we were a low budget operation back then. Uh, I think there were a lot of things that were right about the boat, but... Perhaps we didn't have enough uh, substance to to follow through and and, uh, and and really get the class established the way you need to. You know, a, a lot of boat builders know that um, you know your financial backing is a big part of that. And there's no question it played a role in in, uh, in the early stage of, of, of how many boats we could build and get on the line and, and establish the regatta circuit, that kind of thing. So that wasn't a success for us in the early days, but you know. Uh, as in many things, you know, over a period of time, I think people realize, you know, in, in, in the case of one design sailing, if a boat has inherent good qualities, then it, it takes a while for those things to surface. And, uh, you know, thanks to, thanks to Paul Young and, and Justin Scott, the Viper president, you know, we've seen a great resurgence at this point. So, so how, how did the process work where, where this rebirth and redesign of the boat came in? Um, was the, it your idea? Was it Paul's idea? No, well, um, to be honest with you, I think it was um, it was born through you know a few very active members who felt that the class deserved a, a, a resurgence, and it took a lot of voluntary time and labour, you know, time and effort to see that happen. And Paul had the moulds in England, and the moulds had been shipped there um, after we we stopped building boats in '98, and. Um, you know, Paul took it under his wing to uh, to look over the boat and, and, and look at ways, better ways to, to put it together and uh, ways that suited his production techniques. And, um, you know, the end result is what we see now. Is a, you know, it's, a, it's a really great, solid Ronda product that, um, uh, you know, the Ronda... Uh, um, model of boat building I think is, um, is well established and um, I, mean, I think as a class we're really happy to have them on board. So, so Paul, I mean, uh, uh, did you, you know, so the class came to you, is that right? By a happy accident of fate, when the moulds uh, left America, they came to our shop. Okay. We built other boats, 505. Did they just sit in mothballs? Kind of yeah, we, uh, we had them brought to us by a firm called Race One. Uh, they wanted us to build boats. Um, they ran into difficulties, so the moulds just stayed in our shop. And it got to a point, actually, probably three years ago, when I figured that actually this was... I'd always liked the boat. I'd come and seen Brian in 
97 with a view to maybe trying to build it in Europe. There are some slight obstacles to that at the time, and, and so it never happened, but uh, I'd always admired the boat. I always thought it was a nice boat. When we wanted to do something with these moulds, either get rid of them or do something, I uh, did some research, found Justin, started talking to Justin to see if there was anybody over here that would want to ship the moulds back and build, etc. And uh, he said, well, you know, actually we just want to build her, so can you build us boats? So the whole idea kind of panned from there. Like it was not as premeditated as I would have liked, but... <laughs> Hey, here we are, you know. Well, now, I, you know, obviously we never sailed the boat with an aluminum rig and the smaller bulb. In fact, we never sailed the boat at all until, the, you know, Friday. Um, but uh, uh, it seems to be a really well-behaved boat. Um, yeah. Frankly, like, um, you know, even even when in puffs of 15, 16 yesterday, downwind, getting a little little hairy on, on yeah. some of the jives. It was really no trouble, yeah. um, really, in any way. I mean, it's, I, it, it's a very well-behaved boat. Like I told you yesterday, both you guys, I think, it doesn't... It's fast, but it doesn't. It's not. It's not dramatic. Fast but easy. Fast but easy, and like and, a good woman. Yeah, and it, and it maybe. I, I don't. I like that. I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know if uh, you know. We don't have a GPS with speed on the boat because we're not allowed. I don't know how fast we're going, but it's just really undramatic. Uh, what is it about the boat that 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 gives you uh, that makes the speed so easy? I think Brian did it. He did a really good job. I mean, anything we've done, I wouldn't call it a redesign. We've just production engineered the boat, really. For today's production techniques and standards, it's not a redesign. It's exactly the same boat. You can see here old boats doing well, new boats doing well. You know, it's, it's still one design. From that so point. why is it so easily driven, Brian? Uh, I think it's just a combination of, you know, the, the, the overall hull shape is uh, it's a fairly heavily rocket boat compared to a lot of the newer generation boats, which are fairly flat rocket. So the heavy rocker makes it a little more user-friendly in ways. You know, it planes very early. I mean, there's a lot of rocker on the back of the boat, so that rocker actually sucks the stern down. The faster you go, the more the bow lifts as a result of that. So the nice, nice thing about that is there's no radical movement of crew weight, you know, and you can, you can drive the boat downwind in 30 knots of breeze with actually a man in the middle of the boat. So it's, um, it's really a very user-friendly hull shape. There's nothing, nothing actually radically extreme about it. If you look at any, any modern keel boat, um, there's, a, there's a lot of basic hull elements in, in a boat like a Mum 30, for example, as, a, as opposed to a Viper. There's, a, there's very, very, um, very common similarities there. So the intention was really to create a boat that's easy to sail through its beam. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of riding moment gained through the sheer beam of the boat. And, I mean, in some respects, that's um, that's marginally detrimental because it's a wide boat. But conversely, um, you know, you've it, it, as long as you maintain some weight on the weather side of the boat, you're always in a safe position. Right. Um, you know, with the car lighter carbon rig and the heavier keel, you've got just a very nice margin of stability there. So even if you do a bad jibe and put the boat on its ear, you usually just hang there, and it's most boats only get in that position because they overvang, for right. example. So you can really work on techniques and improve techniques to a point where even in 30 knots of breeze you should be able to sail this boat fairly comfortably. So I mean that's actually our focus this year in, in relaunching the class is to, um, to work very, very, uh, uh, very hard on the, on the rigging concepts of the boat so that everybody is on the same page. They know how to sail the boat, they know how to tune it, that kind of thing. So uh, that's where our focus is at the moment. So, um, Paul, I, I know you've been out on the circuit. You know, you're always here to sort of help at everything I've seen. You know, Charleston and Nude here in St. Pete, you're around. Yeah. And you seem to be, uh, you seem to be really committed to helping the, the, the class grow and building boats and selling boats. What do you see the next couple of years bringing for, uh, for the class and for you? I mean, I've always believed with all the classes we build successfully, um, the key feature is the class association. If you have a vibrant, active class association, classes are good. There are many boats out there which are not the best boats, but they prosper because they are well-managed, well-run classes. So all of our focus in a marketing sense to get the class re-established has been to put effort into the class association. You know, the next step will be to pitch the whole thing up another level. Uh, we're in discussions at the moment about how we best go about that, but you know, we recognize we've had a kind of guerrilla restart, shall we say. Uh, you know, now we need to move it up a little more and, and actually make the whole thing a slicker, better operation. Um, but, you know, so far I think we've done a good job, really. Um, 
come from nothing to something. We've kept well within uh, limited budgets. We've built some boats. We've got people sailing. You know. Uh, how many how many boats have you sold since since the uh, you know, two years ago? Uh, basically, this year we built 28, 29 boats so far. We've got about another four or five on order at the moment. Um, but several people have said to me at this event there. I'm planning to purchase this autumn, so um, I'm guessing we're going to go to well over 100 boats by the start of next season, uh, in total built. So uh, we'll have done about 35, 40 boats, I guess, by Christmas. All right. Which is uh, it's, cool. Uh, it's, uh, there's not a lot of classes doing that right now. Absolutely. Well, yeah. good on you guys, and uh, thank you for, for talking to me. And you can go check out rondarboats.com, rondarboats.com, or viper640.org. Um, Obviously, you can visit the many, many, many threads on Sailing Anarchy about the subject. So, cheers, guys, and uh, wish me luck. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much.